Hey there! Welcome or welcome back to the Intended Fibers channel. My name is Katie and I'm the human behind this channel and I live in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Uh, at this point, I'm not posting as regularly as I could be, but I have excuses. I was just, I was just, I just got married and things, as you can imagine, were busy up until that point. Now I feel like things will start to open up and I'll be more available to film content and more importantly, edit the content. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this channel is all about knitting, uh, essentially my knitting progress, but then also any sort of knitting content that comes up along the way, I will definitely, if I come up with an idea, I'll definitely execute and share it. And other than that, everything I mentioned, uh, information, links, all that will be down below. So let's get started. Today is podcast episode eight, and I have some finished objects to go over. Some, actually not even some, uh, actually some, some whips and a tiny bit of acquisitions. To be honest, my last podcast was in December, and then I did an Everything I Knit in 2023 video, which was in January. So I will say th things have changed. Also, this is my second time filming this video, uh, the first time I filmed it, I just felt like I was personally like having an off day, so I didn't really like the outcome of the video. So I wanted to give it a go again after the wedding. This was before the wedding, and I was like really trying to cram it in. Okay, so <laughs> um, I'm going to use my phone for my notes. I saw another podcaster doing this, and I kind of liked uh, I liked it better than just looking down at my laptop. Or initially, when I filmed, I had my laptop off to the side, and I don't know. So I'm going to try out the phone idea and see how that goes. Um, my first finished object, by the way, I don't think these are necessarily in order when I completed them, but they're going to be in rough order. Um, is this Evelyn top? I'm going to stand up. Is the Evelyn top by Colibri by Joanna. I knit the size extra small and just for general information, the size range available is size extra small to 4XL. Um, I am going to mention pattern gauge because I want to specifically talk about my gauge and I feel like I might potentially be having some gauge issues. So I'll elaborate, but the pattern gauge is 28 stitches by 46 rows. I promise you I swatched and I use even the suggested yarn which I never do and I'm 99% sure I met gauge exactly but my finished object gauge somehow was 40 stitches by 40 rows now this is after blocking it's possible I didn't block my swatch that well <laughs> um but I don't really know I don't really know like how I have 12 more stitches than the recommended gauge. Um, I think I used, I know I used the recommended needle size. Um, so I mean, if you have any thoughts on that, let me know. Cause the funny thing is I knit the extra small and it, it <laughs> English, it was honestly, I'm not like a typical extra small human. I would say I'm more typically a small, like, in terms of just general sizing. I'm not a petite person necessarily. And the extra small for me was loose and it's supposed to have negative ease. I think it was five to eight centimeters of negative ease. So it was actually quite loose and baggy. And to get this fit, and I don't know if you can tell on camera, but I added in elastic all in the collar. I added an elastic in the armholes. So I think initially the armholes were actually like down, down here before I added elastic. And I just wanted it to be a bit more bra friendly uh, uh, and boob friendly, <laughs> boob friendly too. Uh, something I will note is I do think I put the elastic here a bit too tight and that created two things. Uh, for one, I don't mind it. Like I'm not too claustrophobic in my armpit area, but I think it could be a little bit looser. And also as a result, it wouldn't be as cropped. So initially this was the perfect length before I put in the elastic in the underarms and then that ultimately like made this top quite cropped. These pants, I would say work, they just show a little bit, a little bit of skin. 
Um, but honestly, I did want it a bit longer than how it is right now because I feel like my pant options are pretty limited. I also wanted it tighter. So there, those were two things that I didn't feel like this hit home for me specifically. And um, what else to say? I, I'll, I'll elaborate a bit more on my notes. I feel like I've already gone on a tiny tangent there. But that is just a note. So if you do knit this, the armhole will probably be down to here. Assuming, um, I don't even know. Because my gauge, once again, is not like on point. So I actually don't want to <laughs> guarantee that you'll have the same result as me. But it is possible. So just, you know, brace yourself. Um, I think ultimately the elastic will stretch out over time and then these will ultimately become the right length so i'm probably not going to tamper with it uh so back to general statistics the yarn i use for this is knitting for olive merino and the colorway wild berries so yeah it's this cute um i don't even know how to describe it it's a warm i'm not really good at describing colors it's like a dusty rose but it's dark if that makes sense and it has a little bit of a cool tone to it, which I didn't realize when I bought it. And I feel like be I, I just ultimately warm tones suit me better. And I feel like it's a little bit cool tone. So it doesn't flatter my skin tone as much as I would like it to. Uh, I think on camera, it's probably okay. But for me, just knowing other colors on me and how they look, I have a general sense that this is not like the best color for me. Maybe if it's a bit warmer toned, it would work better. Uh, so the yarn or the pattern did call for 100 grams of the Knitting for Olive Merino for the size extra small. And I achieved that. I used 100 grams and I definitely played yarn chicken. So uh, <laughs> like I'm like yarn chicken, I just mean like, I think I had this much of the ball left, like that long. So very, very little. And I used the three millimeter needles, which is what the pattern called for. I did use the collage square ones, which I, I actually didn't own three millimeter needles. So I knew it was the perfect opportunity to buy the ones that are like more ergonomic and I think ultimately create less wrist pain. Uh, so the construction of this garment was top down, top down to you. I think you can't remember if it's the back or the front, but you either did the back or the front first. And obviously you join under the armholes and then you knit in the round till the bottom. Uh, and then the hems here, which are one by one twisted rib, are you pick up and then you knit those as you would kind of expect it to be. So I did decide to go ahead and knit the one by one twisted rib hem for the neck, the armholes, and then the base, which you can see. And um, it's not my favorite. <laughs> Not my favorite. I think if I were to do it again, I would do the stock, a stock net one. I just think, to, in my opinion, if I go closer, part of it is I think my twisted rib is just not that pretty, for one. Um, I think it conflicts too much with the 2 by 2 rib of the general pattern. And also, I thought adding like a pearl ridge to kind of create like a fold would look good. And I don't actually know if I like it. I... I'm going to try wearing, uh, honestly, it's my first time wearing this, so I'm going to try wearing it today and then see how I feel about it. But I think it is because of my pants. I think my pants help me feel better about the shirt. So it's not as bad as I thought it was, but regardless, it, I'm not like ecstatic about how this turned out, even though I'm sure it's not that bad. <laughs> and let me just see if I had any other notes I wanted to mention. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for this one. I think this next time I would do a stockinette hem and I would knit the body longer so that I could account for like the elastic being added to the armholes just to bring it up a bit. Okay, so my next finished object was the, or is, no what? Whatever. It is, I'll put it on. <laughs> the Honey Cardigan by Kudo Vakika or Veronica Lindberg. I did get this pattern from her and knit this book, which I got as a gift from my now husband. Um, well, it was, just, you know, one of those like suggested gifts. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I got the pattern from that book. I think you can buy it separately as well on Ravelry and maybe she has a website, I'm guessing as well. Um, 
It didn't turn out exactly as I hoped. Once again, that's one of the reasons why I really wanted to talk about or point out more so the gauge that I got when I swatched the, you know, the gauge of the actual pattern and then the gauge of my finished object. And this one for me is actually the most perplexing. Um, so I did decide to knit the size small because the picture of her modeling it, I'll put it on screen, is also size small and she has very similar measurements to me. So I thought it would kind of look the same. And what ended up happening, let me show you. I'm gonna come back to this in just a second. I feel like it's a little scrunchy with my chair where it is. So, by the way, this is not my typical outfit choice. <laughs> what? I don't know. I'm going to start with the stats first, and then I'll go into what I think happened and, uh, you know, just my general notes. So I did knit the size small, as I mentioned. The size range for this pattern is an extra small to 2XL. And the gauge for this pattern, it is like a, it's a bulky bulky weight gauge. So it's a 14 stitch by 15 rows to get a four inch swatch. And it's half, if I'm not mistaken, half fisherman's rib. And my gauge and that, so I remember when I swatched for this, I met gauge and I believe I blocked it and I still met gauge. And then I've even measured this now and it's been blocked. Well, steam blocked. So I wouldn't say it changed that much, but it's been blocked and I did do, I did hold up my little swatch thing here and I had a 14 stitch by 14 row gauge. So literally I met gauge exactly even in my finished object um, because I'm saying 14 rows, that's what I counted, but it's possible like maybe I manipulated my initial swatch, that type of thing. So ultimately I met gauge. Uh, talk about the yarn really quickly. It's the Knit Picks Wonder Fluff in the colorway Hair Heather and bulky weight as mentioned honestly just to go on a tiny tangent with the yarn i loved knitting with this yarn it's really lofty um almost has like a blown feeling i believe that would be the correct term for this and um it's really soft for me it's not itchy next to skin like on my arms okay i might say it's like not it's not, what's the best way to put this? If you can imagine an acrylic and how maybe an acrylic doesn't feel like anything to most people, not everybody, uh, it's a bit more itchy than an acrylic, but for the most part, I bear, I don't notice it. Like I wear it all the time and I feel like the yarn is just honestly so nice. And also the drape is really, really amazing. So I 100% recommend this yarn for like a bulky knit because it's really airy and drapey and I also 100% will be buying this again maybe in different colorways to knit a sweater with. I feel like it'll just be the, the coziest sweater. Not my little yarn tangent. Um, so some interesting facts. So I only use 974 yards in the size small and the pattern calls for 1500 to Okay, approximately 1,500 to approximately 2,100 yards to make this project. So I have absolutely no clue. I met gauge, but I'm 500, more than 500 yards, like under the yardage that was required. Not only that, but this project turned out massive. So I've already shown a preview of me wearing it. It is honestly massive. Um, I also, I think I've already shown a picture of Veronica wearing hers and it's way, it probably is like actually tight to her arm almost like some positive ease, but nothing, nothing this excessive, not almost two and a half my arm. <laughs> uh, and I don't know, I, I don't know how did I use less arm yarn, but my project ended up almost twice as big. And I might offer, I, I added an elastic to the collar to bring this in a bit. 
And that's why there is this bunching here, which is not my favorite. I can kind of like uh, go like this and I try to bring the bunching to behind the sweater or behind the front of me so that it's not as bad, but you can still see it's still bunching a bit. I, I don't know. If you have any thoughts on that, let me know. I did use the exact recommended needle sizes. I met gauge. I still technically meet gauge when I did a measurement of the space. So I have no idea why mine is so different than what hers is. Um, I might elaborate a bit more on my notes in a second, but I will talk about just the general construction. I just think it's something that I really like in other people's podcasts and I don't usually mention it. So I'm trying to mention it. The process of knitting this is overall very simple. Um, it's knit in panels. I think you start like either the left or the right and you do the back and then the sleeves. But honestly, you can do it in any order you want because at the end, it's all seamed together and you pick up the stitches for the button band here and the collar. After the button band, you need to pick up stitches for the collar. So ultimately you only pick up the button band to here and then you pick up the collar. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I did opt to actually do a stockinette button band instead of a one by one rib based on my experience from the Evelyn top and how I just felt like it conflicts a bit too much. So I decided to do that. It did take a little bit of knitting math just to figure out not so much gauge, but just to figure out uh, making sure the row count was right, the thickness was right. I ultimately I had to knit it once and then frog it and knit it again, just to like get the right look that I was looking for. As well, I tried using her suggested buttonhole method. Um, obviously not here, but here. Well, actually this is, <laughs> I tried to use her suggested buttonhole method. I did not like how it looked at all. So I decided to do yarn over buttonholes, which resulted in this. And then I just had to figure out because it's, um, a double knit, not, du not double knit, but, um, because I knit it so that I could fold it underneath, I had to get the buttonholes lined up too. So that just took some math and all of my notes are on my Ravelry. So if that's what you want to do with yours, uh, you can just check it out. It's in my projects. And I did put more information of, I guess, my modifications. Um, I also made a mistake with this one and that actually might be why. It's right. Yeah, here you go. So if you look, look here, you can kind of see, maybe you can see I seamed together uh, two pieces. Does that make sense? So I actually, actually was thinking when I knit the second panel, I thought I was knitting the size extra small. So then I had to, and I, by the time I, it, well, it wasn't until I finished it that I realized. So Obviously I technically was supposed to be knitting the size extra, or the size small. So I just knit a skinny panel and grafted it or seamed it together. And that's what happened here. Honestly, if I go close, I, I don't think, honestly, I don't even think you can tell from the front at all. Like looking at it, I don't know how I managed to pull that off, but I somehow did. Um, you can really only tell from the inside and it, yeah, I mean, both of them bunch because of the elastic, so it just, it is what it is. Uh, and ultimately, this pattern ended up being a lot more oversized than I thought, as I mentioned. So uh, it just serves a different purpose in my life now, like, than my initial plans for it. And I think I could potentially knit this pattern again. Um, but I do have a few more things I want to bring up. So let me just check my notes here. Um... For picking up the button band and the collar, she does not provide a pickup ratio of any kind or a suggested one. She just gives you the amount of stitches you should get. And I did not, I just picked up based on knitting intuition. I think I picked up per, like for the button band, I might have picked up per, um, like fisherman's row. <laughs> Cause it's not like the same as like a regular row. So I picked up per like loop, I guess, for the button band. And I got 54 stitches instead of her recommended 59. So I actually had less stitches than what she recommended. And then for the collar, I ended up picking up more stitches. So I had 69 stitches for my collar instead of 61. So just a couple notes there. 
Um, other than that, a tiny note on the yarn, just in case you got really intrigued about buying it uh, from my pitch about it. It does shed a bit, which I guess is kind of like a mohair. So if you don't mind that, then not a big deal. I wouldn't say it's, it's funny, it's one of those yarns that I feel like even if it pilled, it might just look like part of the texture. But I do think it is pilling just a little bit. I don't know if it's just shedding or pilling. So that's food for thought. Okay. <laughs> so this sweater is a stay up till dawn sweater, also by Kuruba Kika. It is in her knit this book. And for me, my personal um, purposes of knitting the sweater were, were actually as a palette cleanser. It's, it's like super, it's a super bulky weight sweater. And I have this yarn that I've had for quite some time. It is partially acrylic and it's a funny, like, um, can you see if I go close? Hopefully my camera just focuses magically, but it's an, it's like tubular, I guess is a good way to put it. And obviously that's because it's manufactured in a very different way than like a wool might be. Um, but anyways, I have so much of this yarn that my mom picked up for me. It is a really nice rust color. Like it is a very pretty color. Is it the perfect color for me? Uh, I don't hate it. I feel like it's not like bang on perfect, but it's definitely very wearable. And I think I actually will find use for this. So it was kind of palette cleanser. It was super bulky. There's my cat. Yeah, it, so I knit up really quick. Overall, it was a very pleasant knit. It's like very simple in terms of construction. It's like, uh, it's the top down raglan. There's absolutely nothing funky about it. The raglan does go on for quite a while. So the depth of the armhole, like my arm is here. <laughs> so the depth of the armhole is kind of insane actually, but I think that's the overall look. Let me just like do a twirl and I'll try to show you some things. The sleeves themselves are very oversized, a little bit balloony. Uh, there is actually decreases throughout the sleeve, but like, oh my God, these sleeves are crazy big, right? Um, there are some decreases along the sleeve, but then you do do rapid decreasing right before the cuff. And what else can I say? I mean, just to show like regular in detail, the collar, um, I folded it in. You, technically, you, you don't have to. It's up to you. Um, I do have a little hole here that I should fix. And I want to talk about the sleeve decrease, de decreases, but you know, kind of went on a tangent there. Let me talk about the basic facts and then we'll go back into like my notes or thoughts on this pattern. So I did knit the size extra small. I learned from my mistakes with thinking a small was a good idea with the honey cardigan, decided to knit the size extra small. I think it worked out because honestly, this is still quite big. It's really cute. Like it, okay, honestly, it is really cute and oversized and it was such an easy knit. Um, I do wish, I know I'm going on a tangent again. I do wish there were short rows for the back here. I just felt like that's a, such a simple thing to add and it wouldn't, it wouldn't ride up at the back if that happened. And I meant to do it when I noticed there was none and I totally forgot. So also a little bit my fault, but mostly the pattern's fault for not including it. So it ultimately is very beginner friendly though, I might offer, so. Um, so either way, there's a pretty good size range, extra small to 4XL for this one. The gauge is 11 stitches by 18 rows. So great, super bulky gauge, so quick. And honestly, I will say this yarn is very comfy um, for being part wool, part, uh, part wool, part acrylic. And I did do a measurement of the sweater as a like a finished object, and it looks like my gauge was pretty close to what the pattern gauge is, 10 stitches by 16 rows. Um, to talk about the yarn really quickly, it is discontinued now, but as I mentioned, my mom got it from like a de-stashing group and stuff, so that's how I got a hold of it. It's a Lion brand, Lion Pride wool spun, and the colorway is mahogany. I want to talk about yardage. So I, for this pattern, it, I use 695 yards for the size extra small or 548 grams of this yarn. And the pattern called for 770 to 1,078 yards for the whole size range. So ultimately I kind of pretty much nailed the, the yarn, uh, 
usage. I mean, I was 70 yards shorter, but that's, that's pretty close. Uh, also, like, I didn't measure or weigh, like, the little snippets that you lose as you're knitting, you know, when you tuck in your ends and you cut. So there could have been 70, probably not, but, you know, could have been 70 yards there. And the pattern uses 8 millimeters for the body. Very, for me, I didn't hate it. Like, I know some people don't love it. Uh, and 6 millimeter needles for the ribbing. And... I guess my only qualm with this pattern was it tells you to decrease it pretty much for the sleeves. It says decrease X stitches over like X length, but it doesn't tell you, it doesn't do any math for you, which is fine, but it just felt a little lazy and it's not like the book was cheap. Um, so I had to figure that out. And then honestly, I also, I just think because the math wasn't done for me. I was a little bit lazy with like attention to detail on decreasing nicely. And it doesn't even like, it just says, let me just see. Actually, so I think this sleeve is not bad, but you can see how to me, it's just a little bit, a little bit messy. It's not too bad, but the other sleeve, oh, this one is a bad one. And it's my, it's obviously my fault kind of because like the pattern didn't give any direction. I don't even know. Oh, this is like a, this is like a knot where I had to join the ball. So that's why that's there. And then the decreases on this one are honestly pretty ratchet. Ultimately, it's in the underarm and I am going to fix that hole when I get a chance, but it's in the underarm. So I just feel like overall I can live with it. <laughs> um, and then if there was direction on like how to decrease in a pretty way, I would have appreciated it because I just didn't have I was trying to do a palette cleanser, so I just didn't really have the um, motivation to figure it out entirely on my own. And I guess all, all my adjustments are, or modifications are in Ravelry, but I did decide to do, it called for a three inch cuff. I did a two inch cuff, and as you can see, the sleeves are actually a bit short when I bend my arm. When I'm like standing, they're actually a nice bracelet length. So it's really just when I bend my arms, they kind of ride up a bit. And it is ironic that if I had knit three inch cuffs, it probably would have been like the absolute perfect length. Fortunately, I could easily just add on another inch if I wanted to. So if I decide to do that one day, we'll see, we'll find out. But yeah, I guess overall, like seeing me wearing it on camera, like look at these bat wing <laughs> sleeves though. So that's just, you know, just so that you know, um, but I will say it lives up to the pictures and this yarn is actually pretty cozy. So that's everything for my finished objects. I now I'm going to start talking about some work in progresses I have. And the first one, I'm going to get it. So my first whip, let me just sh show you <laughs> where it's at. Uh, I will say the camera is 100% washing out the color. It's a much more from what... Um, is this okay? Actually, this this is perfect. So if I hold it back, this is what the color is. If anything, it feels a little bit more burnt than how it's showing up in camera. Maybe the camera is like reflecting light. The color is, <clears throat> excuse me, reflecting light, so it looks more vibrant. But ultimately, it's pretty close. So something like that in terms of color. And I am making the traditional round neck sweater by Christina Probert. I'm making the size small. And I do want to add that this is from a really vintage Vogue knitting book. So this pattern itself, I believe, is from 1947. So it's quite old. And because of that, it is not size inclusive at all. Um, it only has a 32 to 38 inch bust. I do have the name of the pattern book and, and I have it all linked on Ravelry. So if it is something you wanted to get, I mean, all the information's there. That being said, we barely have a finished object. So I would obviously recommend seeing how my object turns out before you go ahead and look into getting it. Um, Cause for all I know, it'll turn out mediocre. I'm hoping it turns out nice. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but it is actually my first fingering weight like sweater. I have a fingering weight project that is not necessarily a sweater in hibernation right now. I'll probably get back to it eventually. Um, 
but it's like my first fingering weight sweater. So I'm prepared for it to be a long haul. Uh, so it's 28 stitch by 36 row gauge and my gauge right now. And don't, I have no clue. I think it's because I haven't blocked it yet. And it does call for, hmm, I don't know. I, I'm going to just say before I tell you my gauge, I did a gauge swatch and I blocked it and I didn't have to stretch it like, and I make gauge. So don't even ask me why or how this is happening, but my gauge as of right now, and I checked it like three times is 20 stitches, not 28, 20 by 32 rows instead of 36. But I don't know. I guess ultimately that just means if anything, my pattern or my sweater will turn out a bit bigger than what the like sample image is. I think it'll be okay because it's like a crew neck sort of sweater. So I think it'll be okay. Um, but it is a weird mystery that I met Gage in the square, but now I'm still knitting flat. Like nothing's changed there. So no clue, absolutely no clue how or why that's happening. I'm using the Duro or yeah. Wait, yeah, the Duro yarn by Rosa Pomar in the colorway Morango. I bought it in Portugal, although I'm pretty sure you might be able to get it in Canada and maybe the States, like through ordering it or something to that effect. Um, it's a fingering weight yarn. It's definitely like a more of a rustic wool, but I do believe from blocking the swatch that it'll really soften up and I think it'll be nice. I'm hoping it'll go well with the, like the choice of garment and the type of pattern. And I am knitting that on 3.25 millimeters. That's important. In terms of the construction, it's knit in panels and seamed together. Uh, so ultimately front and back and sleeves are all separate. It's knit bottom up, which is always a bit risky. So we'll see how that goes. I wouldn't deem it a beginner knit. It is a retro, retro pattern and it's also a knit book. So I feel like with that, maybe there was less, um, it probably wasn't as normal to give as much detail as patterns do nowadays. And then because it's not in a PDF and, you know, we're factoring in page counts and all that, I think the instructions are just kind of limited. So I will say it's definitely like I'm using knitter intuition to figure things out. I am trying to be really careful though, because I know this will be a labor of love. So for this one versus like this one, which was bulky <laughs> for that one, I am really trying to do it right and not mess it up but it does require knitter intuition. So definitely not beginner friendly. And it looks like that's all my notes for that one, that whip. So the, my second whip um, is the Oon Sweater by Ann Fiscum Sunday. I'm guessing that's how it's said. And this has been on my list for quite some time. I bought the pattern when she had her birthday sale. Her Instagram name is November Knits. So I don't know if I, you might only know her Ravelry name. Hold on, it's inside out. You might only know her Ravelry name if you've bought one of her patterns or looked at one of them before. And by Ravelry name, I just mean her actual name. <laughs> but either way, okay, let me just figure out what's the front and what's the back. There is short rows. Uh, it's, it's a raglan, but there are short rows. So there actually is a front and the back. Whereas this one, I don't think there is a front and the back. I think it's just whatever I feel like wearing. I believe, okay. From what I can see, looking at this, this is the front. So this is where I'm at right now. It's actually, um, it's rolling up a bit because obviously it's stuck in it, but it's turned out pretty cute. I'm really happy with it. I did try it on this morning. I might not try it on for this, but um, I did try it on this morning and I'm actually almost ready, maybe a, a couple more inches before I can split for the two by two, I think two by two. There's a ribbing. I forget what kind of ribbing it is. It might be two by, no, it is two by two. Two by two ribbing. You split and it's obviously like got a big open side. So I'm pretty much almost at that point, which is kind of exciting. Although I'm pretty sure that will be like the sloggiest part because it'll just be flat two by two. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But the sleeves will be stuck in it. So at least I'll get like, if I need to take a break from the two by two, I might start working on the sleeves and then hop back and forth. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, so I am knitting for this one, the size one, and their sizes one through eight, which correspond to an 85 centimeter to 140 centimeter bust. 
And the gauge for this one is a typical, I'm pretty sure, typical worsted gauge. So 16 stitches by 24 rows. Uh, I did measure this this morning just to see if my gauge was still in line with that. And it looks like I'm at 15 stitch by 22 rows. This is unblocked. So I think it should almost nail it. The yarn I'm using is uh, Patents North America Wool Worsted, and I'm using the Colorway Dark Gray Mix. This yarn I bought secondhand from Wade Owl Crochet Co. She was doing a yarn de-stash and we're friends in person. So I, I went to her house and bought some yarn off of her. Um, so yeah, I don't actually know if this would have been on my radar otherwise, but I can't turn on a deal usually. I'm pretty bad at that. And I, uh, I actually really like this yarn. So I really like working with it. It's a bit rustic, but it's still soft and it's drapey and airy. I don't know. So I really like working with it. I definitely think I will work with it again. I think it's a really good discount yarn option and it's hundred percent wool. So I don't know. By discount, I just mean like it's a lot cheaper than like high end wool. And my camera battery's at, I can see one bar, even though it was at full bars when I started. Uh, but we're pretty much at the end here. So hopefully this holds on a little bit longer. The body is knit with five millimeter needles, which I believe is probably standard for a Worcester weight project. I wish I knew that stuff off the top of my head, but I don't. And then in terms of construction so far, I would say it's typical top down right line, but it has the German short rows at the back so that it doesn't ride up. And as well, um, the raglan has like a design, which is part of it. So, and then, yeah, my understanding is pretty soon I'll be able to split the front and the back so that there's like a big side split. Is that what it's called? Side split. Uh, and it'll be two by two ribbing. And then the sleeves will be stocking it to like here and then two by two ribbing, I believe. Something to that effect is the construction. And uh, I don't, funny, I don't actually have any complaints for this one, which is great. The only thing I'm going to note, just in case you're planning on knitting it, is I believe what is the most flattering based on my research is if you knit to like the part of your waist that kind of like flares out, if you if you have that, I feel like that's a really flattering place to do the side split. So I'm going to aim to do that. Obviously, every torso, every body is different. But for me, um, I have a point around here where it kind of like my hips come into play. So I'm gonna side split around there because based on my research, I think that's what looks the most flattering. And that's it for my whips. So the last little thing, and I'm gonna try to speed through this a little bit just because of my battery and I'm hoping I can just finish this before it crashes, our acquisitions. And I actually got these quite some time ago. I am really trying hard not to buy yarn right now. So I think these are all bought in November, December. And at this point we're in March and I have not bought one ball of yarn, so that's pretty good. Um, and the reason I, and the reason why is just because I have so much stash yarn. I really don't need more yarn. I have like all the colors you could imagine, and I have so many different weights. I feel like I have enough to make me happy for a while. So I'm working on de-stashing yarn by making projects, and then from there I'll reevaluate. But really quickly, because I'm getting really conscious of my battery life. I got this at the thrift store. So I believe it was, I got two of these for, let me hold it up close. You can kind of see there's like multicolored Tweety bits and it's very rustic. I, I'm really excited about this yarn. It's too pretty, but um, I got two of these and they are 219 yards, but it's an Aran weight for $14.99 of Value Village. And they retail for $13 is my understanding per ball. So I kind of got it at 50% off. It's the Rowan, Rowan Spun Aran. And it's 100% pure new wool. I believe the colorway though is SH962. And yeah, it's like very rustic. So my plan for this, I have enough yardage to make the point slippers. And I know her name, I can't think of it right now. I'll put it on screen. That's my plan for that yarn. and. After, or not after that, well, next is in November, Knit Picks had this sale. I think it was like 40% off a bunch of stuff. And I, I got tempted by the email. So I did place an order back then. Um, 
Some of it I actually, I mean, I will say I had a goal for all of it. So I got, I think I only got two of these because I already have one in stash. So it's the Alpaca Cloud Lace Weight in the colorway Willoughby. And I believe I got two of these. So it's 440 yards for 50 grams. And the reason I got this was I actually had one. Okay, I either got one or two and I already had one or two and I can't remember which way it was. But I already had some in stash and I wanted to use it to hold together with another yarn to make a Moby sweater. So I just needed to get enough so I could complete that little bundle. And then I can start that project whenever I want at this point. And that's the first one I got. The next one I got, um, there's a tiny backstory, which is just when I used to do markets, which I haven't, I don't really do them that much anymore, if at all. But when I did markets, I bought one of those like big value packs from Knit Picks and it had a lot of this type of yarn, like a Simply Alpaca Aran, there was Worsted, Worsted Aran, and that might be it actually. And then different colorways. Um, I think it came with two, one or two of the Alton Simply Alpaca Aran, and I wanted to turn that into something I could make a sweater with. So I just ordered enough so that I would have a typical sweater's quantity. That way I can make a cute, brown sweater out of this. So that was that one. Um, okay. And then the last thing, you've already seen it in sweater form, but I ordered the Knit Picks Wonder Fluff, bulky weight is what it says, in Hair Heather, as I mentioned, 142 yards, 50 grams. And I have, um, I think I must have three balls of this left because I was severely under the yardage that was required. And, I guess just to talk about yarn percentage percentages, this one was, I guess, I didn't actually read this one. Okay, 100% baby alpaca, so straightforward. The Rowan, Rowan spun one was wool. This one, I believe is just 100% super fine alpaca. And last but not least, this one is 70% baby alpaca, 22% nylon, and 7% merino wool. Yeah, so that's it. That's all my acquisitions. Those are all my projects. Those are all my whips. This is my update, I guess, for March at this point. And uh, going forward, I want to be more regular with these podcasts so I can give more updates. And then any other ideas that come up along the way, I will definitely share those as well. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope, um, I'm hoping every video I get a little bit smoother. So I'm hoping that was this was an improvement. Let me know if you think so, hopefully. Um, and yeah, if you, once again, if you like the video, please subscribe. It gives me confidence to keep going. And I will ultimately see you at the next one. Thanks so much. Bye.